Talking financial organization and a professional practice does not have to be boring. Are you ready for a few money in, money out ideas? It's Susan Gunn coming directly to your head to make you think. Can you handle the truth? Because she is known for being energetic, laughs a lot, and gives honest, sometimes direct, but always practical advice. It's time now for Money In, Money Out. Did you know high stress in our lives causes us to react to the smallest things? I remember about 10 years ago, my doctor asking me how much stress I had in my life. I laughed. Because I had two elderly parents I was caring for at home, an elderly step-grandmom in a nursing home, I was juggling all of their doctors, hospital visits, the house, the yard, and a growing business. In an effort to not burst out into tears, I looked at her and started laughing. Well, because I have a degree in psychology, I knew already about the Holmes Raw Stress Scale. It was developed to indicate the level of stress we have that we could possibly be under. There are 43 various life events that they've designated and assigned a value. The higher the cumulative score within a year's span, the higher the likelihood of an illness. For instance, death of a spouse is 100 life change units called LCUs. Divorce is 73. Marriage is 50. Marriage reconciliation is 45. Pregnancy is 40. I think that one should be higher myself. How about some obvious COVID-19 LCUs? Dismissal from work, 47 LCUs. Change in health of a family member, 44. Business readjustment, 39. Change in a financial state, 38. The potential of your LCUs being the highest ever this year is great. Basically, any significant life change has a value. 93% of patients who experienced health problems said they had LCUs over 150. It's the number of life stressors all at the same time that can be overwhelming. In of itself, We can handle a couple, but the overwhelming illness producing stress comes when the LCUs total up. I think after this year, COVID-19 has produced its own LCUs, by the way. Maybe it should be called experienced a pandemic 30. And actually, they have change in social activities as an 18. But after this year, I think that one should be greatly reconsidered a whole lot higher. At the best, we've learned that life is full of twists and turns, have we not this year? But the stress still builds up. Now, let's put 10 people in a business together during a historical time of uncharted waters when their own personal stress, their own LCUs might already be high. That, my friends, is unprecedented. There will be conflict. Expect it. Some people have experienced that conflict by having to stay shut in with their spouse and their kids. It's going to happen. So how do you manage that before it explodes in the practice? That's a good question. To help guide us through these uncharted waters is my colleague and dear friend, Denise Ciardello. Denise is the co-founder of Global Team Solutions, a practice management consulting firm. She is also the past president of the Academy of Dental Management Consultants while I was serving as treasurer. If you ever need a speaker on handling conflict, you should get one that served as president on a board because it's like taming wild chickens or lions, right? Right, Denise? Right. (laughs) (laughs) She's also a member of the National Speakers Association and speaks on team management as well as other topics. We've been friends for many, many years now, and I'm so excited to have Denise with us today. Welcome, Denise. Oh, thank you, Susan. Never a dull moment. And uh, the stress level is even higher when I have someone like Susan Gunn on my board, holding holding my my feet to the fire with every penny that we spend, right? (laughs) Yeah, saying, no, you can't spend the money on that. No, you can't spend the money. Oh, gosh. Um, Yeah, I am. 
I am just flabbergasted with what's happened this year. And the fact that we haven't all mass murdered each other is pretty fascinating. Don't you think we should revise the values for life change units? Well, I liked your idea of having a, a pandemic category. And I think that it starts at 150 and goes up from there. <laughs> I am yeah, just no kidding. Every time we turn around, it's it's amazing. The the rules change, the regulations, the requirements, everything changes, and all the situations are different. So yeah, I, I agree with you. The LCUs are different now. And uh, you know, I would love to be able to have a uh, 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 I'm trying to think of one of these that you just mentioned. I don't want to say pregnancy. No, thank you. But no, I'm no. going to be able to go back to one of these that is at a lower number. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's funny that everything having to do with marriage has an LCU. <laughs> so it's true. like, okay, very not true. being married. I'd also like to say, I think they missed the boat on that. Not being married also has it. So oh, that's yeah. also a stressor. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I think I think the 43 life events that they have specified, and this was back in the 60s, a lot of life has changed since then, right? Um, I think a lot of things have changed and probably that's going to get a revision. Tell me something how that relates to what you're finding out in the practices. Well, when you, when you, you're mentioning all furlough from work and then having to go through all of the employees having to go through and figure out unemployment and and then wait 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 they they got the ppp loan so now you're off unemployment and you're getting paid but oh our hours are shorter all of that is so yeah that was the that was the headache back in may april may june time period well now i'm getting calls from from my clients that say that they have an employee that tested positive however that employee didn't tell the doctor until they had already worked two days. They're waiting on the results of the test. They got the results and then came in in the middle of the day and said, oh, by the way, I tested positive for COVID. Yeah. How do you handle that? Tell me what the LCU is on a situation like that for a business owner. No, no. And then you have business owners that are having to wade through all of the things that employees are having to deal with. I have to quit my job because I am now the teacher of my child or my child has only virtual uh, schooling available to them. So somebody has to stay home and, and take care of my, my third grader, my fifth grader, and my sophomore in high school. It's amazing the, the problems that everybody is having right now and the different situations. I don't know that there's, there are enough numbers for LCUs for what, what the, business owner is going through right now? No, I will tell you, they're certainly not. And the the very really cool thing about our community is that we have all really spent time talking and supporting each other. And I've talked to Denise a, a gazillion times since all of this has started. And we all, you know, we all just kind of check in with each other, which helps when you've got your support system, but it doesn't you know, there's still the the little angst of trying to figure stuff out. And um, as I was talking to Kate Williford, Kate's been on the phone and Denise is also friends with Kate. And, you know, so many sleepless nights just trying to figure out how to help other people navigate. I mean, there's no life change unit for that either. Does Maybe doesn't affect us personally, but it does so many other people. And so we're still trying to figure out how we can navigate um, all of it. But I honestly think there ought to be a life change unit for pending doom and gloom because that's what it feels right, right? It does. And we're all very apprehensive. We're sitting on pins and needles because we know that tomorrow is going to bring something new, something new and different. It's not even surprising anymore. It's just, oh my gosh, here's what else can happen? We're having to redirect. We're having to modify wait wear masks no don't wear masks no only wear masks that i i saw on the news today you can't wear masks that have the on the airplanes that have the vents um beside on the sides oh really yes and it's like wait i thought those were good no they still let some of the the 
particles out. So it has to be the vents with the filters. Yeah, it's ever changing, ever changing. So they have to have filters. I think most of the people that wear the vents have filters. Well, I thought they did too, but they were showing some that didn't. So I don't know. Oh, huh. Wow. No kidding. (laughs) Well, the rules change constantly and you don't know what rules you to follow. No. It's like, and and you get different, you know, depending on on politics, which is sure should not be even a part of it. Um, you know, you you are wrong if you believe this way, and you're wrong if you believe that way, and and somewhere in the middle of it, we still have to figure out how to do life. Our whole life process has been disrupted. It truly and, has. It truly has. Yeah, and I think that's made everybody just. You know, and and individually, um, you've got, you know, 10 different people that are feeling different stresses at different levels for different reasons. You know, and they might have a loved one that's sick or they might have lost a loved one, but then they all have to come together and work in the same place. I mean, this doesn't really even just pertain to dental practices, which is our main industry. This pertains to every small business. So, Denise, oh, wise one, (laughs) how in the world do we navigate through all of this? (sighs) Well, if I if I had the ultimate, if I had all the answers, I would be sitting on a beach somewhere uh, with with a (laughs) with a margarita and a pile of money. Well, the uh, the advice that I can offer at this point, and this is what I'm I'm doing, talking to my teams about all of the dental teams and the, the business teams that I deal with, and even my own team, is first and foremost, we need to offer grace. We need to forgive people for mistakes that they make and, and be understanding that everybody is trying to wade through these uncharted waters and we're going to make mistakes whether it's about COVID or not whether it's about anything you know if if somebody pulls in front of you maybe they really didn't realize that that was their exit ahead of time they're not trying to be jerks don't get mad and blow on your horn and you know wave with one finger give a little grace to, to to humanity right now because we all need it. We all need to, to you know, there, we need a little love in the world right now. A lot of love. And slow down yeah, a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Slow down. And along those same lines, I would say is to stop and breathe. Take a breath. Yeah. And it helps your brain to to really be able to function and to to know what it's going to say before it comes out of your mouth. But also, it just calms your body. One of the reasons why our <laughs> we're doing this later in the day is because I wanted to go to my yoga class. It's one of the best things because yoga has you concentrate on your breathing, going through childcare you know, we focused on breathing. There's an app on my phone that, oh my, I'm, I'm sorry, on my watch that tells me to breathe because it can tell when I'm tense. We have apps that it's called, that calm us down and it's called calm for a reason. Yeah. Because we all, yeah. when you tense up, you stop breathing properly. Deep cleansing breaths are the things that are, are, so important to the function of our bodies and to the function of our brains. And if you related to that, related to that, you know, something I learned with my mom, my mom hated to have her blood pressure taken Mm -hmm. and she would hold her breath. Well, guess what happens when you hold your breath, when your blood pressure is taken, it increases your blood pressure reading. And so I would have to get down I'd always try to if if she was especially when she was in the hospital I'd rub her feet or rub her arm uh, to get her to calm down and so a lot of times um, because you know I my blood pressure can get there and so I'll wiggle my toes and noticeably try to relax my shoulders 
I mean, those are very simple things, but I think we, in the midst of the conflict or the crisis, we forget. And so wiggling my toes, you, you've learned all those breathing things from your yoga classes, um, which I did too. So it was really, those are really helpful. It is very, it is, even, even what the teacher with the pregnancy yes, stuff. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's what I first, I remember going through surgery years later when you've had your knee scoped and I've, I had a knee scoped a few years back. And when my pain would get so in, incredible, I would fall back on my, on my, my Lamaze breathing techniques because it helps, it helps the body to, to, to do what it needs to do to address that pain. And if you're tensing up, it's too, your body just can't handle all of that at one time. You've got to breathe and let the blood flow. My mom had really, really, really tiny veins and she was having to give blood a lot just recently when she was sick. And she would, every time we would go in, I would have her do deep breathing exercises. It would help her blood to flow and it would help just get her mind off of what the fact that they were drawing blood and they're having trouble trying to get a vein for her and from her. And so it was, those are the same things. It's breathing is, it's free. Yeah. But it it isn't always easy. And it is necessary. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It is necessary. We do need to keep breathing. Who yes. would have we would have a podcast on breathing, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm counting. Well, I gotta say, of all the things that we need to be doing right now with COVID, COVID affects our breathing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it does. we need to breathe. Mm-hmm. And I would imagine for those that have gotten COVID that have felt that uh, grip in their chest. I mean, I have asthma, so I know what it's like when you can't breathe. You tend to panic a little bit, but you've got to slow your breathing down and to take long and purposeful uh, breaths. So it's um, it's a little bit of a different different situation. I sure feel uh, badly for those that have suffered with that. Um, I, I agree. Totally agree. So what else can you give us? What's the next thing you would tell us to do? The other thing I would say is to stop. Listen to what's going on around you. Listen to if somebody is in front of you talking, speaking to you, to listen to them. Listen to them thoroughly and completely. I find that a lot of times when somebody is talking I'm too busy thinking about what I'm going to say in response, or maybe I'm trying to think of a, of a me too um, addition to what they're saying. Well, yeah, but you think that's bad. You ought to hear what happened to me kind of thing. The one up world. The one up. And it's something that's important. We don't, we don't listen as much as we should, as, as, intently as we should i find i know that i'm i'm guilty of this and i think that a lot of people are and so that's the that that kind of goes into it kind of uh dovetails with the breathing and giving grace is to stop and listen yeah we, and, we live in a world where um we've lost the art of listening mm-hmm. because we're too focused on our technology um I mean, how many times have we been out with people and their phones are readily accessible right there in front of them like 99% of the time? And and I I keep trying to say, you know, it's we really don't have that much emergency in our life that we need uh, to be chained. Now, there are extenuating circumstances, as both you and I know, personally, that we need to be accessible to our phones, but typically that's when we're not out with friends. So uh, it's different. We've got to get our face out of our phone screen and actually look at the person that's talking and listen. That's it's kind of hard for me to do. I'm I'm speaking to myself now. It's kind of hard for me to do that. Um, so I, you know, I want to be sure to listen. And sometimes I find my mind wandering. That's part of the ADD too. But it's but I find it wandering and going, okay, back. What's Denise saying? What'd she just say? Right. 
Right. Well, and not only that, we have all the notifications, the, the, the noises all around us. We might hear somebody else's tech me- te- text message ding go off and you're like, oh, wait, was that mine? And yeah. you've broken your chain of thought with that person. I, I mentioned earlier, I have a, uh, an eye watch. It buzzes on my wrist and I, it breaks my chain of, oh, I wonder who's texting me. I wonder who's emailing me. I wonder what that phone call is about. And to be able to stop and not you know, literally put all of that away, like in the movies, when it's the, the world is going all around you and you're just face to face with that one person. Yeah. And you're in a conversation. Oh, what a beautiful thing that is, right? When you can really focus on the conversation between two people. I saw a, uh, uh, I, I still have it somewhere. It scanned a copy. It was a news article written like 15 something years ago. And it said, multitasking makes you stupid. <laughs> and, and that was the headline. And I just cracked up laughing. It was a really good article. And I so agree with it. It's even more today. But because I want to focus on my clients even, because all of my work is done remotely. And so when I'm talking to my clients during the day, I will most often leave my cell phone in the other room because I don't want to be distracted. And I close down my tabs for my uh, email and I try not to check my email, but, you know, two or three times during the day to respond because they're flow interrupters. And quite frankly, sometimes stress happens because of an email that you get or a text message that you get, you know, or somebody's being really persistent and it's not a big deal. Just people know how to get hold of me if they need me. And so, you know, I don't want to add stress. I want to, you know, take away the stress. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Our, our technology is, is turning our attention span to, the, to that of a gnat. Oh, yeah. No kidding. And so that's, that's the hard part about it. One of the things that we do in our, we being my, my team, when we are in an office, when we are doing a, a workshop or a, presenting a, a conference at a conference or, you know, whatever we're doing, We often will do an exercise with a group of people that's called Listen to the Bitter End. Love, love, love this little exercise. And it doesn't take but a few minutes. And it doesn't matter if you have three people or if you have 300. Well, you can't do 300, but you will do groups of probably no bigger than um, six to eight people. And everybody, you get in this little circle and you, you start a story. First person starts a story and says, I went to yoga this morning. The next person's sentence has to start with my, the last letter of my sentence. So I went to yoga this morning. So the next person starts their sentence with a G because it was morning this morning, right? Right. So great gaspy. You went and did (laughs) yoga? And then I would start with, Absolutely. I try to do it as often as I can. No way. This is really hard to do. <laughs> You've got to listen. Oh, but it, once you get in the habit of doing yeah. it, it's a lot easier. So I will do that with myself when I find that I'm, I'm distracted, that I'm preoccupied with other things that are going on in the world. And I'm talking to someone and I really want to pay attention to what they're saying. If you, if I listen to every bit of their sentence and I can't respond until I know what their entire sentence is going to be, I can't respond until I know what that last letter is. I don't know what my sentence is going to start with until I hear the last letter of their sentence. You talk about focusing. It is amazing. And in our world of presenting treatment plans to patients or or contracts to people, whatever it is, it's important to listen to what that person is saying because too often as business owners, as uh, you know, somebody who has a service that they're trying to promote or to sell, they are too busy thinking about 
what it is that I want to get across when I actually should be listening to what that person is trying to tell me. You know, it's really interesting because um, one of the things that I've noticed, and I hadn't even thought about this till now, one of the things I've noticed is with everyone having been sheltered, that when you actually do see someone, um, how <laughs> much they talk without taking a mm-hmm. breath. Yeah. It's like adult time on steroids. And um, you have to listen, but it's kind of hard to do that. <laughs> it is, After know. a certain period of time. Yes, it reminds me of when my, my, my husband was in the Navy for 26 years and he would often go on six month appointments. And my mother could all would call and she knew to call me as often as possible because I was at home with children, with young children, and I didn't have adult conversations all the time. <laughs> and so she would, she's like, okay, time to talk adults. And it was, it was funny because I never really thought about it till she was saying that. And we're all kind of in that boat, literally. That's where we are right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you notice that segue between the Navy and me same boat? I just thought I'd. And prove that I'm listening. <laughs> uh, very unintentional, trust me. Uh, yeah, so listening. Yeah, no kidding. And that's, I got to tell you, that's really important as we're calling each other so we don't have face to face. But, you know, in our team, you know, back to being in a practice, um, we, even more have to listen to each other because our hearts will speak. You know, our hearts will, will say what's going on. So we do need to listen. We do. Absolutely. What else? And then, and then, and then, but wait, there's more. (laughs) Wait, there's more. Well, you know, we can do, we, this is all good, but there's still going to be things that, that happen. And we can't deny that there's going to be drama in an office. There's going to be conflict in the office. And I think that what you and I want to talk about today is is all about the ways to help to prevent that. And I think a lot of this helps. Giving grace, listening to other people and and listening and, and, um, and thinking and breathing and all of that makes us better humans. Yep. Yep, it does. But because we are all very apprehensive about everything going on, we're like, uh, you know, what's the old saying, the cat on the hot tin roof? Yeah. We're all jumpy because we don't know what, what's going to come down next, what's going to happen. And so there's going to be conflict. And the other, the other thing is God has blessed us as humans of giving us the ability to, to think and to decipher and to expand our brains. And because of that, we all have different goals and we have different ideas. So I want you to understand that conflict is good. Conflict is is not a bad thing. In fact, it helps businesses to grow. Right. It sure does. Yeah. It's uh, because the, 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 the true... Deadly words in a business is, well, that's not, the way, that's not the way we do it, or we've never done it that way, or we've tried that before, but. Right. Yeah. I've heard that. That's not a cool business. Yeah. Because that means you're not willing to grow. You're not willing to think. Now, you can still take everybody's ideas into, into, in, into play, but you want to uh, figure out what's going to be best for you, for your team. And that's why brainstorming is so good because everybody has ideas and you take what's going to work for you. Everything doesn't work for every business. But we have, we need to figure out what will work for our business. Right. The time the conflict is bad is when it is heated. Yeah. And that, then it's that when it's heated, you're yelling or you're arguing and the brain is shutting down and it's not listening to what the other person has to say because you're too stuck on what you have to say or what you have to think about and what you want. So heated conflict is when it gets bad, when it gets ugly. 
Well, I know that you call that practice conflict resolution 101. <laughs> I do. Yes. And we, and oddly enough, I get calls all the time. People saying the, that <clears throat> oh, I, Stacy gave me a weird look today. And then she just totally ignored me when I went up and talked to her. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle it. Or there's you know, two people are best friends one day and the next day they can't be in the same room together. And I, it, it, it's, again, it's human nature and it's typically the smallest, smallest thing that gets in the way of our human interaction. Unfortunately, it's a lot more prevalent with women wow. than it is with men. Because as women, we hyperanalyze everything and we don't forget anything. So if you say, I never saw her before, and then you see on Facebook that they're on the same, you know, you remember that you saw them on a group photo together 17 years ago, then uh, we don't forget things. And that's, un that's good, but it's also bad at times. So we need to understand that there are some things that need to take place. And it is, this is what we, we refer to as our conflict resolution 101. And there are several important steps that need to take place whenever this occurs. It's the smallest thing. As soon as you have a feeling in your heart that you have done something to hurt or to offend someone else, or if someone has done something to offend you, handle it immediately. The number one step is that the two people have to meet face to face. The very least is that it's a phone call, but it has to be voice to voice. Not texting? No, not texting. Because the written word is so, the written word has no inflections of the voice. The written word, unfortunately for Susan and I, has no sarcastic font. <laughs> which, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> probably. But the written word is so hard to decipher. You can tell a joke that would flop or that would be misconstrued. And so, yeah, don't text. Don't text unless I, I, would, I would say don't text. It. Don't send an email call the person, pick up the phone and call, or better yet, meet, them, meet up with them face-to-face -face in private. It's just the two of you. And then it's also important to understand that there are ground rules when it comes to handling conflict. Uh, there is, there's no yelling. There's no screaming. There's no finger pointing, name calling, crying. There's no crying in conflict resolution. <laughs> Wait, I thought that was baseball. Uh, that too. Well, there's crying in baseball today. Yeah, but, there is. <laughs> but the, uh, you don't, basically you don't want emotions. It's just the facts, ma'am. I just want to, I need to tell you what's going on in my mind and you tell me what's going on in your mind. It's a conversation. It's not a, it's not a big time for emotion because when emotions, when the emotions take over, then uh, clear thought go out the window. So you want to have a, you know, this is an adult, adult conversation. Of course, it's a professional conversation. And so let's just talk as professionals. The way that it starts is the per, one person, one person states their feelings and the next person states, uh, responds back with their feelings, everything. So if I'm coming to you, Susan, and I'm, I, I'm upset because you made fun of my fingernail polish in the morning huddle. I don't know, something, I mean, it can be as simple as that. But the, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to say, Susan, I wasn't pleased when uh, you made fun of my fingernail polish in the meeting today. Or I was offended when you made fun of my religion or you made you made that comment about the way that I do my notes or whatever it is. I was, it's all about me. It's an I statement, only I statements. If I come to you and I say, Susan, you did this, you did this, you did this. All of a sudden you are on your heels and you're yeah. defensive mode. Yeah. Cause you're attacking. Absolutely. 
So if I'm telling you my feelings, Susan, I feel like I may have offended you when I said blah, blah, blah. And so that's my truth. This is one of the hardest things because I, when people call me and say, ah, oh, Stacy won't talk to me anymore. And I say, you know what? You need to go talk to Stacy about it. No, because she'll yell at me. The first step is to go to that person. Because if I come to you and I say, Susan, I'm sorry, I, I feel like I offended you. And you just make fun of it or you, you don't handle it well, then that's on you. But at least I did my part. If I hold it in and I don't tell you how I feel, then it's on, that's on me. So can I come to you and I say, Denise, I really do believe that's the ugliest fingernail polish I've ever seen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not attacking. I'm just saying I do believe. That's your truth. <laughs> well, why don't you try saying something nice? Like, wow, oh, that's, inter- that's an interesting a different color. color. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting color. What what might have inspired you to get that color? Yeah. How about I, that? How about absolutely. let's start a conversation instead of making a blanket statement that automatically is going because again, we're women and we are right. going we take it as we take things offensively, especially from another woman. If right. a guy comes up to me and says, Wow, that is the ugliest color fingernail polish, I would go, Thank you. And I would not think twice about it. You say it, and I'm going to be offended. That's sorry. That's just the female brain, right exactly. there. <laughs> exactly. Now, I think uh, we've kind of gotten into a um, where people will post things on Facebook without thinking about the other person or thinking about. I mean, they they post stuff about their own practice, and I'm going, okay, guys, take a breath, a, and. The end desired result may not be from this post um, because it's creating a conflict because it's attack mode. It's not, I believe, or I feel, or, and it's not appropriate at all anyway. But for the ones that are saying, asking for a friend. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like those. How would you handle a patient that walks in and refuses to wear a face mask? Oh. And yeah, just asking for a friend, right. asking for a colleague. Yeah. So the 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 I think that the the main thing about this is that you want to you want to handle things, and, and everybody needs to know what the rules are, what the ground rules are. And I think if you if you maintain the ground rules, then the conversation is going to go a lot better. Then you can have a conversation and one person says something and the other person responds back. You come to a decision and you and you go forward from there. If you sit down to have a conversation with somebody and the, there cannot be a meeting of the minds, then you might want to call in a mediator. Somebody that is there that comes in and is literally the person that is maintaining the ground rules. They are as neutral as Switzerland. They don't take sides. They are just making sure that the conversation is going properly, that everybody is using I statements, that there are no name, there's no name calling. There's no, well, you idiot, why would you do it that way kind of thing? And it's, it's somebody that's maintaining the, the, the way, the, the spirit of the meeting. It should not need to be for the most things that, that there is conflict about in our world. You shouldn't need a mediator. You should be able to, two people should be able to get together and talk. But it doesn't always happen that way. And if you can't get have a meeting of the minds, then you might want to call somebody else in. So in a practice, who would that be? I would think it would be the office manager or the doctor. Depends if, on, on the, the of office practice. manager. If it's the office manager, then you would call in the doctor. If it's the doctor, you would call in the office manager. If it's if it's the doctor, you should be able to have a conversation with the doctor without having to have a mediator. But if you bring somebody else into a meeting like that, then they're the business owner is probably going to think, "Oh my gosh, I'm getting I'm I'm getting uh, uh, ganged up on." Uh, right. But it's something that. Usually it's, it, usually it's not, 
either one of them. And those are people that can come in as a mediator. Good. Yeah. What if it is, um, yeah, what if it's between the office manager and the doctor? That's the hard part. I mean, I have those, you know, being a fraud examiner, <laughs> I have a lot of those really weird situations um, where the doctor, quite frankly, would just rather ignore the conflict. Um, Unfortunately, our doctors are tend to be the number one people to avoid conflict. I don't want to deal with conflict. Yeah. And that's when I, that's when I have that conversation with the doctor. You, this is not bad conflict. This is okay. This is a conversation that you're going to have because there are differing ideas, differing goals that people are, that people have. And you, if you don't want to accept those, that's fine. But just listen to the other person, listen to all of these ideas, and then make a decision from there. Ultimately, as the business owner, you have the final say. But at least open your mind up and and be able to see and, and understand that there are other ideas out there. People want to be heard. And that's what we're hearing. We're seeing so much on Facebook. People are, are everybody wants to be heard. Right. Unfortunately, we have the internet, um, internet courage <laughs> yeah. that people can say things and not most of the things that are said on Facebook that are, are vile or that are mean would not be said if that person had to say it to that, that other person or to that group face to face. Right. But because we are hidden behind our keyboards, we can say whatever we want and and who cares who gets their feelings hurt? Yeah, which is not a good place for any human being to be. Um, no, I, it's not. It's not the ethical. Final, it's completely not ethical. Oh, it isn't. You're absolutely right. The, the final thing I want to say about this, and this is kind of a long, you know, to, to finish up this topic about conflict resolution, is that if somebody comes up to you and as we say in Texas, you don't have a dog in that hunt. <laughs> don't don't get involved. Right. Don't don't put yourself into a situation where you're in the middle, because when uh, when the mud starts flying, it's going to come all over you, and you don't need to be there. But the other thing is, so Stacy comes to me and says, "Oh, Denise, Susan won't talk to me anymore. She won't even be in the same room with me." And then she starts telling me all about it. Or if I ask, well, why? What did you, what was said? What happened? That now I am participating in gossip. Yeah. And gossip is a cancer and it will kill any business. So my job is to say, Stacy, I, I can see that you are upset about this. You need to go and talk to Susan about that. No, she's going to yell at me. Well, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't be a part of this conversation. I just need to vent. No, you're no. not going to vent. And that's when people get in trouble when they, they you know, I just need to vent to you for a minute. Don't vent to me. I don't want you to vent because I'm not going to be a party to this. So the best thing that you can do, everybody on the team, when you start hearing something negative about somebody else, you turn them around and you say, you go talk to that person. Please don't tell me about it. Right. Because it affects the whole work environment, right? It does. Absolutely. And so if they participate in it, then it ends up being us against them kind of a scenario. And it creates a really hostile work environment. It does. And you can, I've even, I've even walked into an office when there is a team Stacy and team Susan. Oh yeah. Which oh, team you're you're more. More. I mean, everybody, anybody for that matter, it doesn't have to be a consultant can always walk in to a practice and tell you whether people love working there or not. And I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I've walked in a practice before that I was going to be a patient and gone, yeah, I don't know if I want to go here because it seems so tense. You could cut it with a knife and probably some practice drama going on, some conflict um, and the doctor not wanting to listen. 
uh, are not wanting to address it because when Stacy goes to the doctor to complain about it, the doctor needs to, to say the same thing you do. You know, that is on you. You need to go talk to her and you need to resolve it with her. And without being stereotypical again, I'm going to say that our male doctors, our male practice owners, uh, don't typically have a problem with that. People usually don't come up and say, Susie's not talking to me. They will with the females. Yeah. With our female doctors. And that's where the, you know, the female doctors have to do the same thing and say, you know what? You need to go talk to Susie. It's not, I'm not going to be a party to this. In fact, we had a client one time that had, it was a large practice and there were several, I think there were 35 people in the practice, 35 employees and varying departments, of course. And they, he had the hygiene department, the clinical department, and then the admin department. And each department had a department head. If there was a conflict and they needed to, they could not resolve it between themselves, then we had them take it to their department head. And that was the mediator. Yeah. If the department head could not resolve it, then they brought in the office manager or the practice administrator. And that's, you know, that was the, the mediator. If it got to the doctor's level, both employees were fired. Wow. Wow. There was no drama in this office. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Because they had the situation, they had it handled. It was well, and beautiful. I'll tell you that a lot of times I, I hear in the practices that uh, a hygienist or an assistant or someone that works the front desk will go to the office manager. The doctor, you know, doctor won't let me do this. And the doctor won't, you know, it's a complaining kind of thing. Or the doctor's ignoring me instead of going to the doctor. And and the the office manager almost cultivates that um, instead of pointing them in the right direction. What do you think should happen in those scenarios? Well, my in in most of the offices that I work with, that we work with, we have everybody go to the office manager if they have anything to talk about before they go to the doctor. The only reason they go to the doctor is to talk clinical. If it's anything about operations or 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 personalities, anything like that, that is something that would go through the office manager. The doctors have so much on their minds anyway when it comes to right. uh, the patients, the clinical, and also practice management, you know, all of the things they have to do to, to maintain a business. So there are a dentist, you know, this minute, and they're a business owner this minute, and they don't need to hear that that Susie and, and Stacy aren't talking to each exactly. other. Exactly. So it doesn't need to go to the doctor level. Good. That's what an office manager is for. To manage. To be the filter. To, to be the filter. Yep. To be the, yeah. And, and then if it get, it becomes a problem, they can, you know, then it, the office manager in a professional manner will go to the doctor and say, this is what's going on. This is how I've handled it. Are you okay with that? Or this is how I want to handle it. Is this, is this okay with you kind of thing? Right. So I think that it's, yeah, that's, that, that's what the, the, I love that if there's an office manager that has that ability to, to have that, um, to hold that role in that way. Yeah. One of the things I will say is we have a, we have a beautiful one sheet. Actually, I think it's two sheets, but it's a one sheet on conflict resolution. Awesome. So if you want to, if you want to email us, uh, my team at info at gtsgurus.com, then uh, Sarah will send it right over to you. Info at gtsgurus.com. Yeah, they could frame it, right? Absolutely. (laughs) And then anytime you have a problem, you just point right to that thing. (laughs) That's awesome. Thanks for making that available. I'm sure some people will certainly take you up on it. And I'll put the link um, on the uh, website so that they can um, send you an email. That's Perfect. Great. That'd be great. That's awesome. Well, yeah. So, I, you know, I think that drama in the office, there's going to be drama in the office to kind of, you know, talk about how to manage it, how to manage the conflict. If people are bringing their drama in, kick it out the door. 
you know what? We don't want any drama, mama. We are here to work and we have a lot of things that we need to do that are not going to be, um, that are not going to add to, <laughs> to we don't want to add to our stress and your drama about what's going on on in your world outside the door. We don't need that. Don't bring it into the office. We have en- enough things that are, are, we're dealing with, with all this COVID stuff, with all the regulations, with all the requirements. <sighs> yeah. So well, Eddie, but you know what? The same, the same aspect of this is true in don't take it home. Oh yeah. So don't, don't take the practice home and, you know, leave that at the door when you get in the car. I've had several people say they actually liked a commute uh, for their job because it gave them time to leave the, the job on the road as the miles were covered. And, um, you know, however you figure out how to do that for yourself, um, then it's a little bit harder when you work out of the house. Yeah. But <laughs> your commute from the living room to your office. <laughs> yeah. But I do, I do at night when I'm done, I shut the blind. And that's my end of day. I shut the blind, I turn the computers off, and and I'm done. And I don't go back. And so that's my walk away from it, my physical walk away. Then most of the time I go pour myself a glass of wine, but that also helps. That's the the true indication the day is finished. But at least um, I'm not leaving. I know that the practices are stressful right now. I know everybody's stressed. And so what we can do to separate those two work, don't, don't bring it home. Nobody has anywhere. To, you, you don't have anywhere to go. Right. I want to leave. I want to, I want to just go shopping, but I can't. Yeah, I can't even do that. Can't even just go to Starbucks. Can't even just, yeah, shopping is usually, usually the getaway. That's my therapy. Yeah. Well, Manny Petties, those also, or, or the best one, a massage. Can't go get a go. massage. You know, it's like, okay. Um, but. You can't have town. Do what? You can in my town. Oh, well. Yeah, ours is open. But you're absolutely right. And I think that if, if, if the teams, if you stop to think about the situation that we're in right now, and if we can, not literally, but if we can figuratively hold hands and be friends and, and, and walk through this together, it's going to be a lot easier. It's it's a lot it's a lot better if you are if you're not fighting with each other or or you know if there's not a struggle. Grab hands. That's that, just, that's that giving grace. Yes, that's that yeah. giving grace. You know because again, we've never been here. No one really has. Oh yeah, I know what to do. And if they do, then you need to walk away because <laughs> nobody really knows. We haven't set any precedents for this before. Um, a few podcasts ago, I talked about the Spanish flu time, and it lasted two, three years, depending on the historian you talk to. And so if we're going to be in this for a while, we've got to learn to take a breath and give grace. And so in whatever that means, in whatever conflict or situation is going on. So um, I have really enjoyed this and I hope that it's we even went a little bit uh, longer than normal which is you know not surprising when both of us get together and start talking actually that's not surprising at all but there's a lot of information in here I hope that the listeners have uh, been able to maybe apply to them any last words that you would have for us Denise oh I think I have uh, pretty much covered it I I'm I'm hoping it won't last the two years I think that we're going to, this is, you know, who knows how long this is going to last, but I want to be optimistic. I want everybody to try to be optimistic. Put your rose colored glasses on and go through life happy as a, as a two year old or a one year old that is just experiencing life and, and loving everything. Love everybody. Say nice things. When words come out of your mouth, think about how they're going to go into somebody else's ears. And be gentle uh, with with each other and uh, just be kind. 
Yeah, I got to tell you, I, you know, I, my, one of my topics is ethics is your choice, right? Actions speak louder than words. And, and we choose who we are during this time. We are choosing to be who we get up to be. I too am choosing to be happy regardless of the thousands of stressors that we've had. And Denise, your LCUs are like way up there, but (laughs) we're combating it with yoga and putting positive things into your life and surrounding yourself with good friends like me. (laughs) Well, the thing about it is if you, yeah, I've had a lot of stressors, a lot of stressors in the past 12 months, but if I go around and I'm Eeyore and I'm woe is me or I'm chicken little and the sky is always falling, then nobody's going to be want to be around me. Exactly. And that's yeah. the worst place to be. I don't want people to not be not talk to me anymore. And so some of no, people don't want to hear the negatives. So be positive. Well, they do want to hear your heart. There's a difference. And there's a difference. There is. There's a difference. Yeah. And I think that, you know, in most of my clients are dentists and I tell all of my teams, we are in the smile business. Yeah. Let's share ours all the time because that's going to attract more people than, than walking around with, uh, you know, with a frown on our face. No kidding. So I am going to close this up and I'm going to say, that you choose to be happy. If you've got a choice today, find something happy to focus on because what you focus on will be how you act. And so if you're focusing on doom and gloom, you will act like doom and gloom. And if you're finding yourself focusing on doom and gloom, turn off the news because that's not helping. So Step away from social media. Oh, yeah, step away. I do that. I don't watch much of Facebook anymore. So. I just got to tell you, let's just choose to be good and just not being ignorant. I just want to be happy. And there's so much to be unhappy with right now. I'm going to choose to be happy. That's a whole lot less stressful and it will keep those uh, life change units down. Anyways, (laughs) totally. Denise, again, thank you so much. I really always enjoy talking. We talk for hours when we call personal phone calls, but um, it's pleasure to finally have you on my podcast and love you dearly my friend Um, love you too susan thank you so much thanks for what you do for all of your clients you are a godsend to so many people so many of our clients love 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 you and everything that you do for them thank you for what you do thanks denise i appreciate you guys and everybody out there listening put on some kindness be kind take care That's a wrap for this podcast of Money In, Money Out. Thanks for listening. Be sure to write down the most valuable tip you learned today so you don't forget it. And remember, you can find out more about all the valuable books and services Susan has to offer at www.susangunsolutions.com.